everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, this is year 23, season 46, episode now, I believe, five. Uh, yeah, I can check my math. Um, of KGB Monday Night Poetry. It's going, been going for a long time, and we just want to kind of uh, keep it going for as long as we can in these kind of very strange and difficult times. Um, two amazing poets tonight. So uh, uh, first we have Paulo Javier. And, you know, there's seemingly effort, effortless rhythm in his incredibly strong and incredibly urgent lines. Um, in fact, he has a strong sense of the power of each individual line, um, as anyone you might read today. The poems are not just sort of like a polemic broken into lines, which you see sometimes, but actual manifestations of ideas about reality, language, belonging, and the human mind in its attempts to make it all cohere. There's a splintering and isolating of the elements of language like we see in certain visual poets, leading to almost gasp-inducing meaning-making and an assimilation through suffering, through closer attention with the beauty of the natural world. Uh, Paolo, who was Queen's Poet Laureate, from 2010 to 2014, was born in the Philippines and grew up in Las Pinas, Metro Manila, Katona, Westchester County, Cairo, Egypt, Burnaby, and North Delta, Metro Vancouver. He's produced three albums of sound poetry with Listening Center. He is the author of five full-length collections of poetry, most recently OBB, aka The Original Brown Boy, a weird post-colonial techno dream pop comics poem that also includes illustrations by Alex Tarampi and Ernest Concepcion. We're talking about a really incredible talent here and uh, we're really lucky to have you. Um, again, one of sometimes the rare advantages of this kind of presentation is the idea of being able to see somebody's visuals when that um, is a factor. So uh, here is Paolo Javier. Thank you uh, so much, John. Thank you, Jay. And thank you everybody for coming tonight. Uh, um, I'm, I've got the northern lights behind me, but it's the northern lights of Sunnyside. Uh, I'm based uh, in Queens with my family. Um, just been um, doing the best to stay healthy. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this format. I'm so glad that we could do our, um, you know, we could talk to each other and I'm looking forward to hearing from everybody after. Uh, it's an honor to uh, be reading for KGB again. I think the last time was about two years ago, is that right? Uh, I think John, you also introduced me then. And, uh, gave a great intro uh, and I read with Kazam. And so it's such, such a delight to be reading with um, Lynn, one of my favorite filmmakers ever uh, and a real inspiration. And uh, I'm excited to be watching um, her films and hearing from her new poems along with everybody later today. So, um, uh, I'll just do away with the pretense. I've been stuck here in Queens, except for a brief sojourn in Vermont and Manchester, Vermont and um, Massachusetts, where COVID rates are really low. They, they really take COVID seriously in Vermont, I should tell everybody. You know? um, but other than that, I've just been here in Queens and uh, just been helping um, our second grader do remote learning while doing my work. So my poems that I'm going to be reading tonight are all um, centered in and around Queens. So Jay, uh, first poem I'm going to be reading is a nod to Frank O'Hara. It's called A True Account of Talking to the Seven in Sunny Sun. Wait, sorry, that, that went a little wrong. There oh, we, wait. <laughs> I think this is the first time we're trying this, right? Um, yeah. This was... Um, there we go. Not quite. Maybe you want me to read that first? Nope. Um, I can switch. Which one did you want? That was a true account. Sorry. That's, that'll be the second one. So. There we go. Okay. Not quite. No, it's not true account? No, it's Moonbird. I think that you're probably still sharing, or you know what I mean? The, uh... Okay, sorry. I, I look, I apparently I can't have them all open at once. Um, okay, no worries. Wait, sorry, what, 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 which was the poem? Say it, just say it one more time. This is my nod to my homage to Frank O'Hara. Uh, it's called A True Account of Talking to the Seven in Sunnyside. There you go. Nice. You might have to scroll down though, Jay. While I... is, it, is this, yeah, but it, you're, you're seeing the right poem now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. A True Account of Talking to the Seven in Sunnyside. Right to liquor sign, past super laundromat and European Mediterranean foods, which is closed. For rent. Inquiries 5162480080. There is Golden Walk, then top quality cleaners. What are you doing? Oh, this bodega closed. Aw, it's now store for rent. Inquiries call. We can't go to it again? No more. Aw, 
used to be Korean owned and now it's just European meat market on the corner of 42nd. Why it's getting closed? Because it's getting closed. Because richer people have been moving here and raising rent. What does that mean? It's called gentrification. Aw, they make it hard for us to continue to live in this neighborhood. Well, what is gentrification? When people who make a greater amount of money move into your neighborhood and raise rent, they threaten to push out families who look just like us. That's so sad. Who will eat our food? It's so tasty. Two, keep walking west till you hit 41st Street and see PS 150, which thankfully we'll avoid this fall. Why we will avoid it? Because the principle is terrible. And when principles are horrible, teachers leave. And we are always going to support teachers. Why, Baba? Because teachers are the ones who keep our cities intact. What is intact? Holding fast. Teachers keep kids out of trouble. They guide you to be a better person. Actually, your first teachers are always going to be Mama and Baba. The others, Buddha, Ama, Agon, Koko, and Koka. I love Koka. Baba, we didn't go to temple for a long, long time. I know. We will next weekend after we attend Tita Emmy's panel at PS1 MoMA, okay? Little steps, big steps, tiny steps, steps. Why, oh, why the um, principle is terrible? Ah, because the principal doesn't care about her teachers. She wants always to blame her teachers for every problem at her school, precisely what most bad principals do. Three. Baba, how many, how many days is Earth going to be alive? That is a good question. How many days is Earth going to be alive? I can tell you we've arrived on Queens Boulevard on the 41st Street bus stop of the Q32 and 60. Baba, Baba, the only thing under Earth that would be alive, volcanoes? Oh, this place closed too? And no firecracker? And no shooting? Used to be a spa. Meanwhile, itong Barawir's coffee at Nahati Sha. Viraja's marked convenience store where your Coca Marvi would hoard phone cards to Manila and Sunnyside Florist, New York for all, designs and occasions. Hanggang kailan lang kaya para sa kanila? Itong coffee shop sa kanto, once run by four brothers from Puebla. Now a bistro called Sole Luna. Also what, Baba? Sole Luna, mahal ko. Nasa Lowry Station na tayo para kunin yung seven. Baba, Baba. Um, the time when we get home, can you please look up how many days is the earth going to survive? Sige, mahal ko. But only if you step away from there first and say, hello. Hello, seven train. Hello. Sorry. Can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> yeah, great. My, my voice is coming through. Okay, great. Um, and uh, the next poem I'm going to read is uh, actually a poem that appears in uh, Sean Hanley, who is Lynn Sachs' great cinematographer, Sean Hanley's own documentary um, called The Whelming Sea. And it's a documentary that focuses on two, two living creatures, one skybound, the other ocean bound. Uh, and I chose to write a poem for the skybound subject, which is the red knot. Uh, it's a bird that flies all the way from the end of South America stops in Delaware and makes its way to the Arctic Circle and then back round trip. And um, this is called Moonbird, Moonbird. Jake? A game moment. Sorry, just a second. Sure. Um, technical difficulty. No worries. And this bird is pretty amazing because it's been documented for the past 25 years and it's very rare for a bird of this kind to live for that long. So I don't know what the, the word has been about this year during the last migration, but um, if you get a chance, check them out. Okay, that looks right? Yep. Okay. Moonbird, Moonbird. One. The end of the world is an island, land of fire. Hey, Moonbird, Moonbird, at the end of the world. 
what do you ask of me? Sooth saying, two. Sing in veneration of lost city eyes, bleak in the process of knowing, tonsils thundering, one form of that life, a sinister way beyond your ability to change and to steward managed retreat, you'll need a moonshot. Three, ever been this far from home? Night before sleep in Ushuaia, yanking spat from the shell, sustenance for enduring strangle, a shrinking migrant. Four, a springtide, rollicking and rolling, bronzed and swooning, snap into whip formation, cleave air under moon, ripped and gorging aminos, do your best to concentrate on feeding, green eating, profiteering, fat birds fly faster than thin. Five, measurement is what you concocted, unable to fathom enormity, catastrophe, finality. Here is a past lodestar empire, managed retreat will need a moonshot. Six, secret knowledge of the sea who deems your inoculation safe as we become them mass death seeking water wall of anguish you'll add to the equator moonbird feels newly molted no gaps for wind to pass through seven will you return to this beach hold fast over eons, each sea grows bitter with continent, song guarding torrents of embankments drowned, all sons daughters of catastrophe. So I'll close with um, uh, some poems, which are experimental sonnets from uh, a chapter in my book that's coming out next year. Uh, the book is called OBB which is the short version of the longer title, OBB, AKA the original brown boy, which is kind of a tongue in cheek play on identity, identity politics, but also very mindful uh, of uh, Philippine American history, particularly the devastation of the Philippine American war, which was first waged in the hearts and minds of the Americans to the political cartoons of the turn of the century. And so it's an experimental comic it's an experimental poem. It's also a manifesto of comics poetry. And uh, in the work, I hope to make the case that we shouldn't really be calling comics graphic novels and they should really be referred to in terms of the poem. Um, but I'm gonna be reading poem poems and not showing the images. That'll be uh, Lynn's uh, job. Uh, and so I'm gonna be reading um, a couple of sonnets from the chapter called Program to Love remain as beast. Jake? I, I don't have this one. Oh, you don't? Um, no, I only have the, um, let me check again, but... Um, it's okay, I'll wait for you. Everyone uh, no, okay? I only, I only had those three poems. Yeah, so, so, so it's actually, that's, a, that's the title of the, the sequence. So the last one, which looks like this. First oh. line is, dear, so you do have it. Okay, let me find that. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so this is a preface to this book. It's coming out next year. I'm actually in the most vulnerable stage of most vulnerable stage of creation, which is the design stage. It's a major headache for our designer, um, and uh, it's even more challenging because I'm such a big comics fan, and I honor the fact of reproduction being so intrinsic to the art form, which will make a pain in the butt for our designer to say yes to some of the crude images. I'd love to see. Okay, is that the right one? Yeah. Okay. So, program to love remain as beast. One. Dearest will to what from you, private like, suddenly it thing perform in where heaven light to neon. But and of me light, I'll always need year in Manahata, the remainder in that I fail gloriously. Die on the A, listen to crying someone after mind. Kalamari Kita for look as in of this XMB. Continue in eyed Javier, reeling around the mountain solid state as you make it come. 40th in city, a secret, the me, 
the dearest, your gesture single walk to this. Uh-huh, escape and weak when you smile. Don Pedro from his shirt has washed the fleas. Give kick me to the curb if into and gives only Neruda, Javier, Queens, steel rain range, simmering erasers, roaring I, I, then excellent lover and Amsterdam, once raging seas, let me do so. Four. Ever no white Javier make Javier and two between people we papered. Meanwhile, pre and only variety was, could, with swollen thoroughfare, our, the, hope that it falls sexier in New York or Cendrillon. Crystals you wished if soul score live of everywhere never burn life changed, crying this bed judging Ghana and pow recipes with my civil rights full state. Don't say I'm reeling young and not final ends a corner across knowing, give me a way to fight. And I can prove mama an adult with a tress. She want to answer the phone on coming back, nothing street skies foam of original to your tummy and crank up the heel of a mortgage, Palawan and pre-village, the city's heaven red suddenly. You go heavy now, wouldn't this broken new full-sized bed that works again? I see my baby, don't leave, partly falls, allowed, love to, when you always, I. I'll read this for Don Yordi, who I saw on the feed. Um, sardines and oranges. Your sunshine wish, then tears. 8.30 incoming train, send OBB, or any still confide in you almost every day, then stare tummy, small without many circle, René to Ted, Velia, these till firemen come with hose pipe tidal wave. Just keep on best of me, but adjust alone, disarming, finally sun gathered flowers, savor of hunger, class Virginia, savage, kill, orange, poem. Someday mention pre-Hispanic words brew with hope, though later please pain, Keep someone all unexpected. It's I, OBB, animal, yours. Need quietest heart like morning dew. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Look forward to Len's reading and to hang out with everyone after. Cheers. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I saw the clapping. Let's give it up one more time for Pella. Yo, you're a really amazing poet. That was fantastic. Thank you. You're too was, kind. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's nice to be able to actually see the, the poem too. It gives us another sense of your, your style and everything else. Um, wonderful. And also, for what it's worth, the best green screen backdrop setup we've had yet. I wish I were. I wish I could really visit it. I've been yeah. <laughs> reading Philip Pullman's book, so. Oh, right on. Uh, see the other Earth, um, <laughs> but but yeah, I really want for folks to see the poems too, just in case for sound issues and for. Um, accessibility so thank you for yeah. accommodating me there thank right you Paolo. much appreciated great um well so we're gonna take a probably if anybody has questions uh, we're gonna probably do like a couple of them at the end of this but first why don't we just take like a two minute uh break this is normally when certain people would go uh sort of smoke into the bathroom and to drink so i guess you could do similar things um there are no stairs and uh we'll see you back in about two minutes three minutes whatever uh or lynn sacks sound good jason perfect yeah Great. Bradley, what is going on with your background? I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued by this. Uh, it's the um, infinity room, Kusama's infinity room. That you know, was a show at you know, some Chelsea gallery a few years oh, ago. Wow. So I, oh. shot my, I shot myself in the infinity room and then I made a screen of it. So I kind of like it for Zoom because it, it expands the Zoom world. It's a universe of polka dots. Yeah, I can't. Well, you know, it's all light, so, so you know, it's all mirrored. It's all mirrored. Mirrored. I went. I went. Mirror to mirrored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite backgrounds because you can all join in. Anyway, I'm going to cook breakfast for myself right now. So. What I'll time be. is it where you are? Oh, it's the same time. I just got up late. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. I feel like you're uh, you're out poeting me. I've been sleeping nine to five, so you know. 
I did the, I, I once worked in a warehouse from nine at night to five in the morning receiving trucks. Yeah, yeah, no, I've had that shift yeah. before too, so. It's a good shift. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, get, I, I used I, to work. I like, I I like to stay up and work all night, so, you know, I, I try to get to bed by sunrise. I, what I've been doing is going out at dawn. I've been, I've been a real dawn freak, so over by me, there's a great, and I live in Queens, and there's a really great soccer field, and I'll go out for dawn, and then I go, well, what about astronomical dawn? You know, when it really starts turning from dark to light. So I go out for the like, two-hour version of dawn. You know, the sun comes up, and then I go home and go to bed. Plus, a lot of people are eating break fast now, anyway. True. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Cousin, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that I was just going to say that I used to work at a taco restaurant <laughs> in Buffalo, New York, called Mighty Taco. And I worked a shift from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. So mm. I got to go home a little earlier than you guys. Yeah, no, that's a perfect, that's a good shift. No, but surprisingly, I loved it because my South Asian immigrant parents, my curfew until I was 17 was 9 p.m. Mm. And then when I turned 17, it was raised to 11 p.m. So I was never allowed to go out late. <laughs> um, but when I got my shift at the restaurant, I was able to do it because it was work. So you're allowed to be out late for work. But what I would do is I would work um, until like two and then take a break. My manager would give me a break and I would go to like whatever party was happening and then I'd have to come back and work at the end. Wow. So it was the only way I had a social life basically. Hi Cosm. That's great you had a party show. Hey. <laughs> Who said hi, Paolo? I did. So great hey. to see you. Paolo, the poems are amazing. Who is publishing your book? Uh, it's a press called Nightbo. Yeah, wow. Yeah, everyone pretty... should everyone should should check yeah, out. They're Nightbo. new, right? They just started like last uh, week, right? Oh, is, you know, uh, I, I really want to know the the founder of Nightbo. Why? Why? why it it would be great if the founder of Nightbo were here and he could tell us about what <laughs> no. what what went into the twenty years of Nightbo books. Oh, and, oh, and, and every God. and and everyone, I'm everyone's agent. So Cosm has two new books out, and they're phenomenal. And, um, <laughs> check out Cosm um, taking part in the panel on Rilke in November um, oh, yeah. for, Poet, for Poet's House. So check that yeah. out. Yeah. No Super pressure, Cosm. <laughs> Super excited about that. No, but Jason, I always said, and it's, it's God's honest truth, but like if I had any idea, any clue about what publishing meant, I never, like there never would have been a night boat books. <laughs> As someone married to someone who runs his own small press. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, but I mean, it was like surrounded by like in the 19, late 1990s, early 2000s, being in New York City, yeah. totally surrounded by people who are basically like, we're not going to wait around for the mainstream of the w literary world to do anything. We're just going to do it ourselves and we'll make, we'll make up our own presses and we'll have our own reading series and we'll have our own journals. And, and that's how everything happened then. It's so much easier now with being able to do things online or, you know, in readings and journals and everything like the, you know, you don't, you know, still things cost something, of course. Yeah. The software costs money and the equipment costs money. But other than that, it's like, it's a different, um, it's a different thing now. All right. So we should we should we move ahead? Should we? Um... Yeah. Sure. I'm ready. Okay. All right, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Lynn. I'm just gonna. Okay, all right. Um, so we are a poetry series. Um, we call ourselves Monday Night Poetry at KGB. Um, and Lynn Sachs is a poet, so you'll be hearing her poems, but inside of Lynn's work is also a challenge to the boundaries that have been drawn around poetry. And if we think about poetry as something distinct from other genres, not from other media, but from other genres, that definition of poetry emerged in two significant moments. The first is the early modern period or the Renaissance, when the sonnet entered English and the words for, the words for spoken voice became poetry and words intended to be sung to a melody became song, lyric, having a claim to both of these genres, hence our continued use of song lyrics and lyric poetry. And the second is modernism, when during the roughly 40 year period from 1890 to 1920, poetry, like some sort of giant octopus, began to absorb everything written that wasn't obviously something else, like a novel or a cookbook or a bomb making manual, even though it was a Mary Baraka's poem on how to make bombs that got dial a poem shut down in the 1960s. Poetry's genre boundaries have always struck me as useful. 
I like them very much. But I also see how they can constrict as well as, con as, well as instruct. And one of the trends that I see in contemporary letters is a move away from genre specialization. Rachel Zucker on a podcast confirmed my memory that in the zeros, it was not cool for a poet to do anything but poetry. If you were writing memoir or novels, I was kind of like, mm. um, but now poets are reaching out past Racism. our boundaries. <laughs> and we've had notable moments like Warsan Shira collaborating with Beyonce and how lucky we are to have Lynn Sachs for who decades has been working at the boundary between poetry and film and who'll be presenting her own work, which engages questions of medium, genre, image, and text, giving us a powerful sense of what art may look like going forward with someone who has modeled the idea that poetry not, sorry, that poetry need not be limited to what we often think of as poetry in terms of words choreographed on a page, but rather can spread out through multiple media and emerge as something new and exciting and relevant. Um, Lynn Sachs grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. She is currently living in Brooklyn, New York. She received a 2014 Guggenheim Fellowship in the Creative Arts. She has made 37 films. Tender Buttons Press published her first book of poetry year by year in 2019. Um, Lynn lives in Brooklyn with her husband, filmmaker Mark Street. Together they have two daughters, Maya and Noah. Um, please welcome Lynn Sachs. Thank you, Jason. Uh, and hello to everybody. It's just really splendid for me to be here uh, thinking about this convergence of film with poetry because honestly, I started with poetry. Um, I didn't know how to make movies, but I knew how to play, or I was exploring that, the play with words, going back to being a kid. So this is a really special moment to have both of these. And I'll be reading from my new book, uh, year by year poems, which is from Tender Buttons. And the introduction was written by Paolo Javier. So he's been a really extraordinary inspiration for me. And at the end of my reading of poems, my poems, I'm gonna show you a few films and the first of which was completely uh, the, an outgrowth of his writing. So we have a, we've been intertwined for quite some time. Um, I also want to really thank small press distribution because it, it, whether we make our movies, our movies, our books ourselves, or we have a, like a press or whatever we do, small press distribution gets those books out there. So I just want to say how grateful I am to them. Okay, so I'm going to read from Year by Year Poems. And your, this book came out of my turning 50 and deciding that I wanted to write a poem for every single year of my life. And I wrote it by hand, and that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it was important to me to resist the computer, to just be more um, like a, an excavator of my experiences through the dirt of the paper using my pen like a shovel. So I wanted to show you that because almost every poem has the original draft within the book. Um, so I'm going to start with, not the first year of my life, but I'm going to start with 1969. <clears throat> Our telephone rings, Neil Armstrong on the line. He knows I stole the Earth's only moon. Give it back, he says. I watch him step across the lunar landscape. I thought we could be friends. He turns to look at all of us from the moon. I am the only one who sees his sadness. I wanted to start with this poem because I was seven years old at the time. And when I looked back at that year, I thought about this global experience because everyone I knew who was seven at that time, whether they lived in Australia or the Netherlands or Cuba, they all remembered it. And now we jump to 2020 and it's almost the next totally global experience with COVID. So I chose poems that I thought played with that dynamic between this intimate moment and the beyond, whether it was good or bad. <clears throat> uh, so this is 1973. Dad is at dinner less and less. He's either on a business trip or with a woman who isn't mom in full color, imprecise. But when he is at home, he won't let me watch just any old thing. I say goodbye to Lucy, 
Ricky, Fred, Ethel, Hazel, and Gilligan. With pretzels and a glass of Coke, we hunker down to his TV drama, Watergate. Now starring Dean, Haldeman, and Ehrlichman, with dad, we talk. I finally become real to him. I wear an impeach Nixon now button on my dress. I feel brave. Now I wanna talk about something that I thought at the time was so important and I still do. Um, for some of you, I'm gonna use a word that you know exactly what I mean and others might not and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little later. But this is 1974. I saw him running naked on the university green, streaking, and then again, the same guy in the shopping mall parking lot, his floppy folds, the soft calluses on the bottoms of his feet. At night, our slumber party becomes a midnight snack of truth or dare treats. We seven copycat girls throw off nightgowns and run into a suburban field of telephone poles and feral cats praying someone, anyone, will see us. Streaking. Most of you might know what it is, but streaking meant taking it all off and just running through the subway or running across your front yard or, yay. I know someone, the one person in there just snapped and she was definitely not alive in 1974. So I'm glad you like that. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna jump to the 90s. Um, Again, handwritten and text, um, 1991. I don't know her, but I am there with her. It's as if she were the woman next to me at work. She hesitates, pulls back, wonders if it's worth the risk. I watch her testify before Congress, all eyes on her. She remembers a single, a double, a baker's dozen uninvited overtures from a man who sat behind his desk, the Honorable. I notice her gulp and the tightening in her throat. Testify, Anita, tell them, your secret wills its own neglect. So um, it's been interesting to see the story of Anita Hill kind of go through our lives. Um, there are decades where people don't mention it and it happens that in the last few we have, and she's really been able to finally find her place as a hero in American culture. Uh, okay. This is 1999. <clears throat> and I want to say that um, I wish this story were not a story we still knew, but it hasn't changed a bit. This incident, this awareness. In our front yard now, Columbine grows wild. With each bloom, I think of her, a mother too. She feel, feeds her son, knows the fruit that makes his lips pucker, the sheet that pricks his stubbly cheek, the grade he received on his biology test, how often he hiccups drinking a Coke, which ride scares him at the amusement park how he conjures an obscure spelling word, how long he takes to shit, the moment in a day when he is most likely to be kind. I doubt he ever told her about the night his skin touched skin or the day he skipped school or how many guns he hid behind the broken sewing machine table that she refuses to throw away because one day she hopes to have the time to sew again. This is 2005. Wars help us order time, before, during, after. I am not a war photographer. Trauma sends me back to bed. I see a driver in a beige Toyota swerve to avoid a squirrel, almost hitting a just off the curb stroller. I dream that Susan Sontag is writing me a letter with explicit instructions on how to experience the pain of others. Her manual <clears throat> falls into a little brook where I'm sitting and drinking cups of English breakfast tea. I could jump in the water and retrieve her treatise. 
Instead, I lay on the grass under the touch of the sun's rays and play with my daughter's braids spread across my belly. My daughter's here right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a poem uh, from 2006 that I wrote uh, after Katrina in New Orleans. Together we inhabit a few gray New Orleans afternoons. You point to a gaunt woman in once tight jeans, zigzagging patterns across an empty boulevard. We both take pictures of archeological wonders not yet meant for the garbage collector. I hear dogs that are no longer there. An old kitten plays with a thread caught between two splinters. From a screen door swinging open and shut by the arm of the wind. Same woman circles the globe and comes back. More gaunt than five minutes before, watching us pretend to watch her. Katrina's turbulent swell becomes a song we can't get out of our heads. A moth flitters over to, to, over to your two sip left can of beer. I pick up the invitation to a party from someone who may not be okay. You remind me that everything that appears is also carved away. So I have two more short poems. This is 2010. In the eventuality that preparation for security advanced, signatures obtained, life jackets confirmed, permanent medical records sealed, pharmaceuticals delivered, weather reported, batteries checked, tires filled, expiration avoided, warnings acknowledged, wills signed, if and only ifs collected, and still no one anticipated the return of my brother-in-law's cancer. A friend forgot to send her payment, a single check she never put in the envelope, hidden under a stack of worthless receipts, appointment cards, and electricity bills. The check never arrived, her policy canceled. She who had always get, given up her ovaries and come face to, who, excuse me, she who had already given up her ovaries and come face to face in the ring with illness won that round. Now, no rope to hold on to, no pillows to fall back on. We two friends of more than 20 years sit at a table in a cafe, talking of our homes, books we've read. People almost forgotten, purses with zippers, jump ropes, kitchen counters, projects abandoned. I ask her about her health. She's crossing her fingers. That's all she has until they pass that bill. And this is from 2011. In the Cracker Jack world of my default birthday party, flames become go-go girls on the parapet of a cake purchased yesterday. I perform split second happiness for the camera. I catch my reflection in the bathroom mirror, take another look at my own silent film and listen once again to the soundtrack I'm playing over and over. Those are the poems. Back to you. Um, and now I would like to share I, uh, the Starfish Aorta Colossus, which includes Paolo's voice and my response to his book, uh, Courtyard of the Dragon. And uh, here we go. Oops, we should be hearing something. Oh, sorry, it's not playing? Yeah. Uh, uh, it was, it, there's no sound? I did, did other people hear sound? No, I think if you, if you share your screen again and click share uh, audio or whatever the... Okay, sorry, let me take care of that. Sorry, we, we, did, like a we did do can... a tech run through on this. Um, okay.
So we, we should be hearing something here. There we go. I'm sorry. I think I got it. Would you mind starting? Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Perfect. Starfish Aorta Colossus, 10. Today it is no longer cry, but admit yesterday, I never once thought it. Again, tears call to the door, begin to fall on the board of twenty. He comes calling like a shovel sign above sunlit tundra. Green inside languor, wonder, emergency, the poem. Wind sprint arrival, are you? Today it is no longer cry, but admit yesterday, I never once thought it. I can, will, may no pen movement, sling, intention under starfish aorta. On that empty beach, we sit close to keep warm. Live, crackoom, empty beach, seal pups play while panda submerge. Ocean bottom, hearth, buffet, alien lane, wide horizon. He comes calling like a shovel sign above sunlit tundra. Hurricane crescendo or catfish city sublimate English. Ocean bottom, hearth, buffet, alien lane, wide horizon. Terror, lament, volta, inquire why, horizon, aorta, colossus, impeach. He comes calling like a shovel sign above sunlit tundra. Wind sprint arrival, are you? Appear before blank space. Name English, mind, divinity, empty beach. I can, will, may no pen movement, sling, intention under starfish aorta. So, so I have such gratitude to Paolo and 
after the films, we can talk about that collaboration. And I think there's going to be a new collaboration. Um, but uh, by the way, I had a slip of the tongue. And I think Paolo likes slips of the tongue. But this one you probably didn't like because I said Courtyard of the Dragon. I meant to say Court of the Dragon. I, um, I like it. It's great. Oh, OK, you like slips of the tongue then. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the next film is three minutes, uh, it's a little shorter, and it's called Visit to the Childhood Home of Bernadette Mayer. And um, Bernadette has also been a very important person to me, kind of more recently. And um, this film was made in honor of the public Siglio Press publication of her, not new book, but new book for a project she made in the early 70s called Memory, which pulled together images with text in a very similar to way to the one that I, that I, that has sort of like been my muse for my work most of my life. So I felt a bond. Um, Paola was part of this creation and um, this was made just about six weeks ago or so um, during the pandemic. So um, this is for Bernadette Mayer, poet Grand Dame, and here we go. When you are a woman, you make a great record and a daughter. Whose daughter? The doors and the bust, armor plate of a woman, and curls, black bats, impending disaster, <laughs> impending doom, unending, impending, <laughs> a reorganization of the employment of faculties. A pigeon flies by the window, the subject frames, see, just, so, much. Who are you? How did I come by you? I'm anger, my anger. Is sense drills into you? I am set in this piece. This is a move, you little man doll, Fall down, little woman, doll, moves closer, is wounded. You get up again, a miracle. We mate. like two watch faces on the same wristband. Waterproof, I hope. Set them, set them back a few hours to noon. Back a few hours to noon. Inked, your move, in a certain number of hours, moves, hours. Like you mentioned before, as a reorganization of the one who was mentioned before. To the one my presence here speaks to, I shoot the moon, men all at once, and then I've got all this time left to twiddle my thumbs. I've got to get a watch face and start needing it. There's no two ways about it. It's like pissing on the most analytical version of all the stars. It's like breathing. Breathe the smoke of your own fucking brand. So I smoke yours. You renegade. Why not admit it and set me free? I hate chess sets. I hate all power fixes except the power I have to show you something. Um, so having spent uh, uh, a few months thinking about Bernadette Mayer, I wrote the following poem called Orange Glow. And I want to say that the images are animation images by a woman named Laura Harrison. And Laura Harrison took 
a poetry and film class, well, not a class, workshop from me and Paolo. So everything, you know, art making is like giving gifts. Instead of giving a box of candy, we work together. And this has been a, this is very much a process. So Laura was in our, the workshop with the two of us in May, and then she and I collaborated on this 90 second film called Orange Glow. A face crumbling blueness, fragment building crag and fuchsia light is not space but a stroke, a swim, a brush, indivisible from the eye that carves sight. Some light is bulb and some is sun inside the gem. Each stroke is so different, a face and a frame, becomes a wistful and also a box triangle home. Enter smoke from the west, caught in the air quality index of a dark 2 p.m. now, hermetic hospitality dust smoke. Yes, I can hear the ringing in your ears rubbed by this image you made. Not really San Francisco now, but is for me becomes that place. Sends me there. Feel the heat. Nothing comes through the fog but the heat. The crackling of the burning brush underfoot. The heat. The worry. And through it all a line drawing itself spitting in motion in liquid. Um, so, um, uh, that film was also, was actually just completed a few days ago and the poem was just completed a few days ago, very much fresh out of the oven. You could tell I was writing about the fire in San Francisco. So the last film is also a, a film poem is a pandemic time project, a four minute film I made. Uh, with the support of small press traffic out in San Francisco. My daughter Noah is in this film and I made it with the poet Anne Leslie Seltzer who lives in Oakland. I is throat is girl is I. You is night. I is throat is girl, you are the night. You are throat is girl, is the night. Thing is parody is thing is form. Body is sun is vehicle is frenzy. Lead is parody is gold is parody is coitus is parody is crime. Origin is ground, is base, is center. Car is clock, is image, is mirror. Sentence is tracings, is system, is centers, is circles, is totality, is labyrinth. Shoe is tooth, is nose, is love. Smell is eggs, is eyes, is root, is love. Dog is stomach, is goose, is woman, is jar, is confusion, is vehicle, is love. Earth is animal, is man, is result, is cause, is animal, is man, is earth, is coitus. Man is others, is one, is others. Girl is presence, is it, is darkness. Love is vanity, is diamond, is rage, is image, is mirror. I is indifference, is her, is me, is I, is love, is her, is she, is I, is her, is she, is forgetting. Forgetting is subterfuge. Man is specter, is coffin. Direction is sun, is ground. Tree is ground, is shaft, is sun. Tree is lightning, is ground, is love. 
Love is cloud, is cloud, is earth, is storm, is the only rain was falling stones. Sun is hand, is tree, is eye. Erection is sun, is cellar. I is sun, is cadavers, is reaction. Force is passion, is debauchery, is indecency. Nothing is entrails. Ground is water. Idea is force, is eruption. Organ is parts, is eruption. Deflagrations is heavens. Fertility is disaster. Love is throat. Parody is blinding sun. I am the filthy parody of the torrid and blinding sun. I is throat, is girl, is I. You is night. I is throat, is girl, you are the night. You are throat, is girl, is the night. Blinding is violating, is night, is sun. Blinding is sun, is you are night. Sun is empire, is no sun sets ever. That was the first to see those all together. And the last three are very much right out of the oven. <laughs> well, all right, well, thank you so much. Congratulations, uh, that was amazing. Yeah, it yeah, seems like we got some love in the comments uh, from the audience as well. We have loved this collaboration, love this collaboration too. Amazing, Lynn and Paolo, gorgeous, spinning and liquid, awesome dance of image and text. And we can feel the heat now in Sonoma and Napa County's masterpiece, Love is Vanity, and thank you. And if you're, if you were not on um, our mailing list, um, if you find out about this from Lynn or Paolo and you don't get um, the KGB Monday night emails, go ahead and um, text me or John or Matt um, directly your email address. We'll make sure that we put you on that list because mm -hmm. we are here every Monday night um, at 7 p.m. And um, the Zoom link that you use to come tonight will work for the rest of this season. Right on. Does anybody uh, have any thoughts uh, or questions that they want to share out loud? Tell everyone, you know, to feel free to type their email address in the chat. Hmm. And then I'll add it right to the list that I copy and paste for the email blast. And um, I, I should also specify, um, next week we will be back with Anne-Marie Fife, um, Jonathan Lee, and Tom Slay. Uh, Jonathan Lee was the winner of our open mic last year, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he won <laughs> yeah. because we booked him. Yep. Uh, Don yep. was actually the winner, but jo Jonathan was always our bridesmaid, never our bride. So yeah, we put true. him on the bill because he's amazing. <laughs> Lynn. Yes. I searched and I already found your book on something called thriftbooks.com. Is that where I should get it or should I get it somewhere else? Well, I like, that's a really good question. Um, I'm just going to be honest. I have noticed that through the pandemic and the few places where my books are, usually you look at books and you watch like, oh, people are buying them. And first I had 30 and now I have 25, but I'm noticing them going up like their inventory. And I think that means that the bookstores are closing and they actually had to get rid of their books, which is so terrible. But I really like small press distribution and it's in Oakland. Um, so, but anywhere is fine. I mean, maybe you'll get a bargain from thrift, but thank you very much. Um, I'm putting a link to Bookshop to, um, if you want to purchase Lynn's book through Bookshop, that supports um, small bookstores. 
Yeah. So if you do that, you'll actually be supporting that's us. My new, that's my new go-to. Bookshop is my new go-to for buying books, like for gifts, because they're super fast, like the big A. <clears throat> I'll get it there then. Thank you. So everybody go over to the big a .com. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. no is... Pamela, is it okay if I lower your hand? I, it, it's, I, we've, we haven't used the hand button before, but like, I feel like a little weird lowering someone else's hand. That's like, that's a host option. Lower their hand. I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't know how to make it go away myself. Okay, all right. So I, apparently I have to do it, but I just wanted to ask before. <laughs> um, I wanted to say I thought it was really interesting that both of us showed pieces that we had made with our daughters. I, I believe that was your, your, you were, Paolo, you were quoting your, or thinking about conversations with your daughter. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um how you use questions in that poem like how you thought about the question as an evocation or as a transition or how it allowed you to think about things differently yeah um it, it, you know it I, I was thinking and writing in in the sense of like trying to make a walking poem which is like a physical thing but it was kind of um method method writing like i made the poem from recordings I made while I was walking to and from the seven train with my daughter. So, uh, and then finally it became a poem. And so when I, obviously in that attempt to make the poem, I have to be in dialogue with my, my daughter. And um, it, it just so happened, um, I'm an educator. It just so happens I'm an educator and we were walking by the local school that we were dreading to enroll her in, you know, <laughs> we couldn't get into the school that you, you really wanted her to get in. And that just the classic educator mode, you just ask questions and, um, you know, let her ask questions and yeah. not me asking questions and um, uh, not really answering her questions, you know, <laughs> uh, because, you know, the, the speaker or the poem is thinking about a bunch of things as well. But yeah, so letting my, my daughter asks endless questions, as you know, and uh, that's just a part of how we talk to each other. And I don't necessarily have an answer. And uh, I think seven years into her life, um, this life at least, um, she's okay with me not having all the answers. Asking questions more important. Well, I noticed. Oh, wait, wait. oh go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say someone on the chat wanted us to talk yeah. about collaboration, starfish aorta. Oh, you want to start, Paolo? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I mean, that was such a blur. Speaking of being an educator, I was in, I was in my first year as a public school teacher teaching in East New York, and I was so exhausted. And uh, I invited Lynn to make a video, and that seems to be a thing that happens in a lot of poetry launches now, right? Where you know, you you make a trailer for your video, but I have this great opportunity to talk, at least propose this idea to one of my favorite filmmakers. And really, I just thought, would you like to work on a short film, you know, for my reading? And it could be a film that is yours that may not have to do with my book. And then from there, I think Lynn just said, sure, you know, if you can send me some poems, uh, we'll take it from there. And Lynn chose the poem. And uh, the, the, the interesting thing about the poem is um, it's part of a sequence of um, poems. And uh, it was a poem, it's a sequence of poems that I made in the midst of mourning uh, Katrina, certainly in my neighborhood, which went through such crazy devastation. Um, uh, but I think uh, Lynn found a way to, you know, really take it into a whole other level, and um, I'm just sort of like this providing part of the soundtrack. <laughs> so. so I wanted to say, um, first of all, going to what you were talking about, what, when you referred to walking around with your daughter and recording it, one of the things that Paula and I have in common is this um, appreciation for the grittiness of the document. So, of course, as a writer, you can just sort of 
make believe that you remember exactly what your daughter said. And that's also fantastic. But I love the idea of you walking around with the recording and then being like letting her, her, her actual syntax speak to you. And so um, part of the, your syntax in, in um, Starfish A or in, in Court of the Dragon was that from, to my eye, there were very few verbs. So in filmmaking, we, it seems like it's all verb. It's like move, 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 move. And sometimes I get really tired of that because I want to dwell instead. So uh, what I decided to do was go back to film footage, Kodachrome regular eight film footage that I had collected for 25 years. That's what that was. And it was sort of like his poem, the shape of it, the lines, these delicious words that were part of that were part of structures, but also were able to float if I extracted them from the poem. Um, were hit, it was like he gave me the key to go back to this archive that I I, could, I had not been able to figure out how to work with. And so I've always resisted film poems that are that illustrate. I would like not do that, but I think you you have to to speak in parallel or an intersection. And you have to take like all the tangents you want to and the tangents are the surprises. So that's kind of how I played. I played with his text. Yeah, I think also if I'm, I'm remembering now, this is so triggering um, in the best possible way. Uh, your, your love, your professed love for my idol, my idol of idols, and that's Gertrude Stein. And uh, Court of the Dragon kind of shadow stanzas in meditation, but the challenge that I set or the writing set on itself was to actually embrace the noun. And you're right, like verbs are not really present, but I think as I was making the poems, the nouns were very action oriented. Yeah. And so I think visually you found a way to embrace that, not syntax, but parataxis, right? And, and with very specific images you choose, which are like cinematic nows. And um, there's so much weight to them, but at the same time, they're so decentered, which uh, that's Gertrude Stein, right? Act like there's no use in the center. So it's great. And we have another request in chat to expand on the workshop experience. Oh, the workshop. Um, so I'll, I'll start with that. Um, the two of us were asked to teach a workshop at the Maisel's Documentary Center. And that's named for um, Albert and David Maisel's, who are two of the most renowned documentary filmmakers ever. Um, and as part of their legacy, they have left us not only their movies, but also uh, a, a, a fantastic center for culture, cinema, and, um, and like just interactions between people who want to be creative. And it's in Harlem. And so Paolo and I were asked to teach that and we were going to be going up to Harlem and working together and then COVID happened. And so um, the, instead of just canceling the workshop, um, they made it available to absolutely anyone in the world. And we had 17 participants from Uruguay to Ireland and then both coasts and the many other places in the United States. And, and uh, that group of people is kind of stuck together because I think we were all sharing a very, very, very difficult, <laughs> difficult is like just the beginning, um, time in, in globally. So there was this way of being vulnerable together and thinking that this was a, a place to, to just be transparent and talk about many, many different things. And we also made films and poems. And, and um, Paolo gave us just the most incredible um, challenges to break up stanzas <laughs> and all of these things. So um, I loved it. And so that's what we did. Paolo, do you want to talk about it? That's, that, that's pretty much it. Um... I think uh, really the, 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 the challenge that I felt was how do we get folks to connect to each other and feel connected because we didn't want to um, do a workshop that was guiding so much. And uh, 
you know, there's already screen time involved in Zoom. And so what happens when you're dealing with new films that you want to present and all of that. And I was coming from an angle of being a total Luddite about film and just a fan and a terrible filmmaker, uh, a frustrated screenwriter. I majored in screenwriting and theater, and I just majored to the point where I realized I'm terrible at both. Um, but when I discovered experimental cinema, I think that's around the time that I became the poet that I, I should be. And so that's where I proceeded from like this very amateur perspective, but a true fan of film. But how do poets engage in cinema? Um, and then connected that to Lynn, who you know, guided us. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be teaching a three week, well, three Thursdays in a row, poetry film workshop that, uh, that we're calling Frames and Stanzas um, at a place in Los Angeles called Beyond Baroque. But it doesn't matter that it's in Los Angeles because anyone could take it. Uh, and we actually scheduled it so it would work kind of for people on the East Coast and um, or anywhere. No, I mean, not anywhere. It might be hard if you were on the other side of the globe. But that will start um, November 12th. Like we wanted to be fully after the you know what. Can people still sign up for the um, workshop? Yeah, actually, we it's just been posted, so it's on Beyond Baroque, and I will put in the in the uh, the Zoom meeting uh, a link. Okay, because um, we're about to wrap up, so thank you guys so much um, for everything, and then we will be back um, next week with Jonathan Lee and Anne Marie Fife and Tom Slay. Um, if you want to be on our mailing list, then please um, go ahead and give us your email address. Um, and we are going to start putting up the um, readings into a YouTube channel. So we do have the recordings of the readings since we've gone online. Um, and we will soon have those available for you on YouTube. Um, I'll put the name of the place. I don't have the URL, but you can find it. <laughs> okay. And so, Matt, John, do you want to say anything else? Um, Paolo, Lynn, do you want the last word? Oh, this was such a, a, a really a treat for me to, to be with KGB and um, like that long history that you all have had. It's just like kind of gives me the shivers. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to give a shout out to Matt as well. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, um, yeah. Jay and KGB. Uh, what a delight this has been. And I love this format where we're actually talking to each other. Um, I think also like all of this is kind of showing how we can kind of broaden you know the poetry reading here if we're forced to kind of do it like this too but it's also like i wonder how when we go back to any other kind of like live readings you know to still be able to do interesting visual things i mean this is fantastic and that film was amazing those films were amazing great thank you very much thank you everyone thank you thank you all right i'm going to leave the room open um